Okay, it's time again for the SMC Journal Podcast, the show that's all about performance engineering and IT today. I'm Scott Moore, your host, and thank you for joining us today. I'm listening to the feedback from my viewers, and they're saying they want to hear more about observability. So, your wish is my command. Today, we're going to be talking about observability obstacles and overcoming them. I've brought on a special guest from Instana, Josh Lee, who's going to talk about some of the things that he sees from a vendor's perspective, uh, you know, pitfalls that companies run into when they're trying to bite off the observability platform for full stack observability at, all at once versus those companies who have been doing monitoring and have been using some APM product that now want to move over and transition into full stack observability. So we'll also kind of address the Gartner Magic Quadrant around observability platforms that I talked about in some previous podcast uh, just a, a couple of weeks ago. So more about observability. Before we get started, let's talk about the sponsors that make this show happen. This episode is sponsored by Microfocus and the LoadRunner Solutions family. That includes LoadRunner Professional, Enterprise, Cloud, and Developer. You know, performance matters. Did you know that LoadRunner Solutions have the largest community of practitioners in the world? Join that community at community.microfocus.com, scan the QR code, and check out the LoadRunner family page on performance engineering, as well as their YouTube playlist that we've got links for in the show notes on smcjournal.com as well as YouTube. This episode is sponsored by Supervisor. Stop losing money with a slow website. With Supervisor, you can continuously track the performance of your code and your hosting, predict site page load speed with high user volumes and an easy one-click load test solution. Find out more at supervisor.com. This podcast is sponsored by Oracy Software. For over 20 years, Oracy, a DevSecOps innovator, has helped companies innovate, accelerate, and automate the entire software development lifecycle. Oracy AppSec and Oracy Cloud Solutions and Services offer full lifecycle support and integration to ensure scalability of transformative applications. Also, the makers of Oracy Labs is a train anyone, anywhere, anytime AWS cloud native virtual e-learning platform and Oracy works with hundreds of global brands as customers and partners that includes fortune 500 companies and that's across a variety of industries find out more at oracy.com and now let's go to my interview with Josh Lee of Instana an IBM company hello Josh welcome to the SMC journal podcast it's good to have you on Thanks, Scott. It's great to be here. Uh, well, I'm, I want you to just tell us a little bit about you because I'm, I'm interested to find out. We just virtually met ourselves. Sure, absolutely. So I'm the developer advocate at Instana and uh, really just an evangelist for observability. Um, I, I have a long uh, career working as a back-end engineer for startups and building out APIs where we had an embarrassingly small amount of monitoring and observability. And uh, so I'm here to, to help people who were stuck where I was uh, learn how there's a better way. So Josh, you know, I recently did a three-part series on observability platforms and the Gartner Magic Quadrant that just came out a few weeks ago. And one of the companies I talked about was Instana. And I think you had reached out to me on LinkedIn because uh, you saw that. So when you looked at the episode, what, what were your thoughts about being on the magic quadrant for Instana showing up there, where you were placed, and then uh, I guess what, did I did I get it right when I gave my observations? Yeah, no, I, I think your observations were pretty pretty astute. Um, obviously, we're very excited to be in the leadership quadrant, and we think it's where we belong. And if you look at the trajectory, right, like talking about comparing us to our competitors, if you just look at the trajectory of where Instana has moved on the magic quadrant, sort of just rocketing into that leadership quadrant, um, I think that really speaks to everything that we're working on right now and the capabilities that we have and where we're going to be moving in the future. I remember just hearing about Instana just a few years ago as this 
up and coming, uh, very fast rocket ship up, and then all of a sudden there's an acquisition by IBM, which kind of surprised me, but it, I think it shows how important observability has become in the industry in just such a, a short period of time. You're, you're now seeing companies who traditionally were always considered to be application performance monitoring, APM, we've heard about this for years, and now all of a sudden they're rebranding to we're in a new observability platform and they're really changing very fast. I mean, I think that's obviously because of Kubernetes and how popular it's become very soon. But uh, do you do you see that as well as like this huge major trend that we've got to say that we're an observability platform? I, I definitely see the trend. I would say that some, you know, for some folks, it's it's buzzword bingo and other folks, uh, you know, some other companies are actually delivering on that promise of of what observability actually is and making it different from, you know, APM. So with the AI expertise that IBM has, we're really pouring fuel on the fire of, of what Instana was. And we're able to, you know, if you look at the other IBM acquisitions around the same time as Instana, I'm specifically talking about Turbonomic. There's a synergy there between your, your observability, your monitoring and your ARM. And that synergy is in the direction of automation, which is, Really, to me, I think that's one of the biggest differentiators between traditional APM and observability is the degree to which it can be automated. Um, because our services are getting too too big and too unwieldy, they're starting to resemble, you know, organic systems, um, and and it's it's too much to have to manually configure and and think about and understand all of the pieces um, for one individual or one team. Well, that really brings me to my biggest question that I had for you is from your perspective as a vendor, um, what are the biggest challenges that need to be overcome? There's And there's two um, company types that I think about. The first is somebody who's not really done much monitoring, they're branded and everything, but they're all of a sudden they want to bite off observability, uh, full stack observability. How big of a mountain is that to climb? What are the biggest hurdles that you might have and then two someone who's traditionally had uh, an APM product but they're not getting as much value out of it as they they want and now they're saying well maybe observability is really the answer for us we let's make the leap from APM to observability what do you see as those big challenges sure absolutely so certainly there are there are really two types of challenges right there are organizational challenges and technical challenges so at an organizational level trying to implement observability or even traditional APM, I think one of the first challenges companies will run into is just um, who owns what, right? So knowing knowing who's gonna take care of the implementation in any particular slice of your stack um, is, is often the first challenge that we run into uh, with our clients. And I don't really have an answer to that. I think that's that's just something that, that all large companies will struggle with. Um, you know, we can talk about Conway's law and, and that sort of thing, but you want to make this as easy as possible, right? So that, let me get into the technical challenges. At a technical level, it's it's the diversity, really, of the, the services that we're trying to monitor. It's how do we ingest the data? How do we make this affordable, right? Like if we're just saying, okay, well, we want observability and observability means monitoring everything. Well, are we going to actually keep those logs forever or like, how are we going to compress and store those logs? Um, what metric granularity are we going to use? Are we going to sample our traces? Um, these are the kinds of questions that you're going to have to start looking at as you look at your implementation. Somebody just pushes things out of the box and you've got all of these logs and traces going on it can amount to a whole lot of data in a large company. It can get very expensive really fast. So if you just open up the gates, you're going to have a big surprise on your cloud bill if you're storing it out there is that it, so is that one of the the things that you have to consult with new clients to say hey you, you got to put filters on this you got to tune this for your organization right um with instana we try to to make that easier for our customers right so if you're building your own solution yes you're going to have that challenge and there are still challenges even with our vendor solution right so um, data egress can be really expensive um, i know corey quinn gave a great talk about this at, at monodrama last month and just the, the cost of moving data between, you know, AWS regions or, and then the, the extreme cost of getting data out of AWS is something that a lot of people don't consider when they're thinking about observability, especially if it's, you know, you've got a developer who wants this and they're not even exposed to, to that cost information. 
even if you have an observability backend like Instana or one of our competitors, we're handling the storage for you, but you still have to get the data to us somehow. So yes, that's where um, any any kind of tricks that you can that you can have for that data on the wire, like we're doing compression at the agent level. So we're doing our best to get all of the data that we need, but minimize the amount of bandwidth that is required um, between hosts in order to get that data. You asked about companies that are maybe using traditional APM now and are, are trying to gauge how well their transition to full stack observability is going. And to those companies, I would say just, you know, like MTTR, I think is a great metric. Um, we're starting to talk about MTTP at Instana. So that's mean time to prevention. Um, which is what you get with the automation that I was talking about before. But but for just the purposes of tracking a transition, um, if your MTTR is going down, then you know, you're know you probably doing things correctly and moving in the right direction. So if you had to argue or debate for Instana as a uh, unique solution for an observability platform or how you might differentiate yourself from others, what do you think the biggest differentiator is Absolutely, it's it's automation and intelligence. Um, and you, you asked for one thing. To me, those two things go together, so they are, they are one thing. But um, w you know, starting with the installation process, right? You install if you install the Instana agent on your host. Um, one of our unique features, uh, you know, with some of our competitors, you might need to pick and choose. Oh, I need this plugin for the agent. I need this extension. Same thing if you're using open source, right? Like if you're using Open Telemetry, you need to pick and choose which plugins are going to be needed for your stack, install those, configure those. It's it's a whole process versus with the Instana um, agent installation, you get the you get the Java process running on your host and it's gonna discover everything happening on that host and start reporting it back. And it's automatically gonna download and install whatever plugins that it needs in order to do that. Um, and then we take that, that ease of setup and and back it up all the way to the analysis layer. Uh, automated alerting, right? Alert configuration. This is something that is a challenge for a lot of folks. Is, you know, you don't want to have, you don't want to have no alerts, right? Uh, someone, someone joked to me once, like, "Oh, wouldn't it be a dream to just never have any alerts? I could, I could sleep peacefully." Like, well, no, I would be terrified. That would be for me. That would be like when my dog is a little too quiet, and I know something's wrong. <laughs> you wonder what's going on, yeah, with that or the kids or whatever. I, what I'm did, with you. What did you find? Yeah. So, so you don't want no alerts. You want to know what's going on, and you want to you want to be kept abreast of the situation. Um, but you also don't want to be drowned out in alerts and and just not be able to see the signal through the noise, right? So you don't want to just be inundated, and then you get to the point where you're just kind of it just becomes white noise to you, and you don't even notice the one that you do need to notice. Um, so. <clears throat> You know, finding those thresholds can be a process of trial and error in the worst case scenario um, versus, you know, getting back to the automation and intelligence within Stana. We've analyzed uh, a lot of running software using machine learning, and we've built models that tell us what healthy software is supposed to look like so that we can tell you when it doesn't look like that. And you don't have to do any configuration for that. We we'll just look at your running services and say, oh, this service talks to this service and this service talks to this service. And the traffic between those first two services is, is normal, but there was a 90% you know, dip in the traffic to that third service. There's probably something wrong and, and we can alert on that. I remember hearing about when I first heard about Instana, one of the big um, uh, things that attracted me was not having to do all this configuration for the monitoring, um, just understanding that once you apply it, it knows what to go and grab, which reduces toil. That you know, that's one thing. But then a lot of people talk about the AI, and so there's a lot of smoke and mirrors out there around AI as well. But observability, especially for these large enterprises, gets complex so quickly. I think we're at a point where we have to have AI helping us with these. Otherwise, it's just going to be a bunch of noise, and then it takes all of your effort just to filter out the signal-to-noise ratio. So I think you have to have that, and I feel like the ones who do the, the, the AI the best, the early adopters with the right rule sets and, and, and those things that are needed to get you to the the problem spot, the fastest, those are the ones that are going to lead the market. So the, the fact that you're emphasizing that with Instana, I think is a big plus. I, I think with AI, the fear 
is, you, you know, and I've heard this from developers that I've spoken to, they're afraid, oh, if I, you know, add a, an AI driven ARM to my system, it's just going to, it's just going to make all of these changes that I don't understand. It's going to break things or it's going to introduce brittleness or, or, you know, potential errors. And, and so there's a lot of fear around automation and AI decision-making. It's like a competent junior, right? And I saw someone describe um, GitHub Copilot this way, and it's the same thing, right? Like the AI is not there to do your job for you. Um, the AI is there to look at what you're doing, make inferences, and then make suggestions. And and that's really it. I see, that's, that's great. Now, I know you're out there, you're talking about uh, full cycle observability and you've got some upcoming events that you're going to be uh, having some webinars about this. Do you want to talk about one that's upcoming? I know there's one coming August the 24th that you're going to be doing. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. Very excited about that. So we're going to be talking uh, with Tom Grano from Light Run, uh, myself and Martin Fuentes, who's our project manager for logging. And we're going to be talking about Light Run's offering that brings uh, production, production debugging tools into your IDE. Um, so when you combine that with something like the observability from Instana, um, it enables you to do both production and pre-production debugging. And when I say pre-production, I mean in production-like environments, right? Not just on your on your local machine. So you can you can really get into these modern software architectures where the communication between the services is as much a part of the the application as the functionality of the services themselves. I'll make sure that we put a link to that webinar out on our show notes uh, and it'll be in on smcjournal.com as well as the YouTube video. And um, just to tag along with that, because you're talking with Lightrun, if you saw that um, observability talk that I did, one of the things I mentioned was how come Lightrun wasn't anywhere on the Gartner Magic Quadrant? Do you, I mean, because... I don't think that Lightrun is really trying to solve necessarily the same problems that an observability platform is trying to solve. They're focused on the developer experience and bringing that that information into your IDE um, versus you know being something that's really more of an SRE or a DevOps tool. Got it. Got it. Okay. Well, good insight, Josh. Thanks for being on the show and thanks for telling us about uh, what you're doing and and. Uh, just talking about observability in general, it's always nice to have a view from a vendor uh, talk through that and what they're seeing. Um, I'll make sure that I post everything on the notes, and I, I really appreciate you being on the podcast today. Thanks, Scott. It's great to be here. All right. Thanks. Well, there you have it. What do you think? Uh, does this help you understand what it's going to take for, uh, for biting off observability, improving your process, and making it happen? What other kind of topics around observability would you like to hear about on this broadcast? I'd like to know. I'm easy to find. You can reach me at scottmore.consulting. You can also see my LinkedIn profile and Twitter profile where I share uh, information, events, and links to this podcast as well as my other show, The Performance Tour. I'm also available by email if you email me at help at scottmore.consulting. Um, love to hear from you. If you like this kind of content, it'd be great if you could subscribe to the YouTube channel. We'd love to have you so that you're notified when these new shows come out. This particular podcast comes out every Tuesday and Thursday mornings at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. And uh, we'll be continuing talking more about observability because it continues to, there continues to be a lot more news about it as well. But we'd also love to hear from you on other topics you'd like to, for me to talk about. So contact me. Thank you for watching the show today, and we'll see you next time on the SMC Journal Podcast. This is Scott Moore saying bye-bye.